And so today we will um, get started with uh, the what it is that the LEAP is. And first of all, we wanted to um, introduce you or uh, explain a little bit about what is Bridge for Billions for those of you that might be joining us that aren't very sure where are these entrepreneurs coming from? Why are they pitching? So the Bridge for Billions uh, platform program ecosystem is really an ecosystem for entrepreneurs uh, to be connected to these growth opportunities. Um, basically, it's an opportunity for entrepreneurs to um, learn about uh, the basics of developing their, their business and making sure that they have the right support at the right stages. We focus in making uh, entrepreneurship um, democratic and accessible to everyone in the sense that we understand that there's a gap in the entrepreneurship ecosystem that currently exists, where most of the opportunities for entrepreneurship are either not inclusive, efficient, or meritocratic. So given this in mind, this is where Bridge for Building kind of comes in and offers the opportunity for entrepreneurs worldwide to access the type of support and um, the type of uh, structure that they will need to develop their their business ideas and make sure that they're all set to go into the next stage so um, where do we fit into the entrepreneurs journey uh, all of our entrepreneurs are early stage entrepreneurs what do we mean by this these are entrepreneurs that either have a very well-defined concept um, and have uh, basically uh, the idea of what it is that they're trying to solve and how it is that they're trying to solve it. They're just looking for that validation of how their uh, projects can get launched. Or they're also looking to develop their minimum viable product. So we are focusing on those types of entrepreneurs. And um, basically with, within this, the Bridge for Billions platform allows them to develop uh, their business. We focus in uh, 12 uh, areas of, sorry guys, we focus in 12 different areas of entrepreneurship. And um, these 12 uh, different areas of innovation are basically, um, they offer, let's go back a little bit. Oh, sorry. There we go. Um, so our 12 areas of innovation, um, as you can see, we have entrepreneurs that uh, have their projects in each of these areas of innovation. And um, we're very proud of having projects from all over the globe in each of these areas. So what is the LEAP program? The LEAP program, as you guys will know, is an incubation program um, that offers the structure and methodology of step-by-step -step and learn by doing along the course of three months. And it is designed for these early entrepreneurs. How does it work? We go through this process of matchmaking. So all of our entrepreneurs that will be going through this stage of meeting mentors, potential mentors that are interested in working with them, connecting with them, and then joining uh, together in collaboration through the structured uh, mentoring that the platform and the tool offer. In the final culmination of all the work is a visual business plan that each of these entrepreneurs has come and now have the structure for what developing we develop programs with partners as well so one of the things that we try to do is in order to make sure that entrepreneurship is accessible for everyone we uh, we, we partner up with different companies institutions, governments universities to make sure that these uh, innovation ecosystems are available and and unlock opportunities for entrepreneurs everywhere some of our success metrics, as you guys well know, we're very proud of the fact that we have so many entrepreneurs uh, and a huge amount of support from our mentors that join as volunteers through this program. Um, we also do follow up with the, the projects that end up incubating with us and see how they've been uh, growing throughout the years after their incubation. One of the things that we're most proud of for sure is definitely the diversity and the the amount of projects that we have in each of the sectors. But I think uh, some of the things that we, we really like to highlight are the fact that we have programs for seven different countries and that 46% of our entrepreneur founders are women, which is something that's really high if we take into consideration for incubation metrics. Um, and this is something that we will continue to strive to make entrepreneurship inclusive and accessible. So now we also, uh, we're gonna explain to you what is the Leap Pitch Challenge, right? The thing that we're all here for today. So the Leap Pitch Challenge is a biannual competition for our early stage entrepreneurs who have completed 100% of the, the Leap program. 
So this means that these, um, these entrepreneurs have gone through the, the 90 days, have worked through each of the, the tools, and have validated their business idea with the help of their mentors. Through this competition as Bridge for Billions, we hope to uh, continue to, to make accessible and democratize access to entrepreneurship by offering the support uh, through the, the fact that we have a seed um, seed today, and then also uh, the different perks that we offer. So, for example, today we'll be uh, including one of our partners that um, we'll learn about later on today, and um, finally, of course, the that they're going to be receiving today from our journey. So this is going to be uh, really important and key for them to learn more about how to fine tone and really refine their, their business ideas and their pitches for future and other types of, of competitions or presentations. So I think now um, we want to go ahead and introduce our our panel of, jur uh, of our jury. And uh, first off, we have uh, Mike Varela, who is uh, a mentor within Bridge for Billion and founder of uh, We also have uh, Emmanuel Rotier from form, uh, he's a former global head of flow at BNP Paris. And uh, Melody Musa is uh, joining us as uh, Venture Support Director from Impact Capital Cambodia. And uh, Lori Lane Zucker, uh, CEO of Impact Entrepreneur from, from the US. So um, we want to welcome you guys. If you guys could uh, maybe just say uh, really quickly um, a thing or two about yourselves. Uh, let's go ahead and start with you, Maite. Maite, if you don't mind um, letting us know. Introducing yourself. Just to have the opportunity to pitch uh, their projects and to be part of this jury and all the all this process is very exciting for me as a mentor and, and to see to develop this 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 project. Um, actually, I'm I'm living in Dublin, but today I'm in the sunny Barcelona, as you can see, and and I'm a, a professional mentor and. Very excited to be involved with Bridge and, and everything they, they offer me to be with. So um, good luck to everyone and enjoy the time. Thanks so much, Maite. Okay, um, Laurie, would you mind going next? Sure, hello everyone. Uh, I am in not so sunny Massachusetts, and, <laughs> uh, um, but very happy to be here. Uh, Impact Entrepreneur is a uh, I call it an impact economy company. Um, we ha have a global network of about 22,000 entrepreneurs, investors, scholars, and students of social and environmental innovation who uh, are particularly interested in doing this work within a transformational context or a, a presumption of systems change. Um, so it's, uh, and we do a lot of education and, and support for the people in our network uh, as part of our mission. So, but it's great, great to be connecting again with Bridge for Billions, and uh, I look forward to hearing the pitches. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lori. Uh, Emmanuel, are you available? Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, Emmanuel here from uh, sunny Barcelona as well. Uh, my first time on this jury, so very excited about it. I've known Bridge for Billions for quite some time, so I'm a heavy supporter and enthusiast about Bridge for Billions. And myself, in a nutshell, I'm, uh, for the last four years, four or five years, I've been acting as business angel, uh, mentoring, advising sometimes, and more and more into impact-related uh, projects. Not exclusively, but it's taking a bigger share uh, every, every day, I would say. So, you're used to hear the pitches, and good luck, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, finally, we have Melanie. Melanie, would you introduce yourself, please? Um, so nice to meet you all. Um, so my name is Melanie. I am from uh, France. I live in Cambodia for five, four years and a half. And so I work for Impact Hub Phnom Penh and um, I mostly work with very early stage entrepreneurs. I guide them for this journey of getting started. So all so far our programs and uh, this is my first experience with Bridges for Billions but I've been always following all the great work that you have been doing and really early and so it's my great pleasure today. So yeah good luck to all the participants. Thank you so much Melanie. 
Okay, fantastic. As you see, we have uh, um, representatives in our jury from all over the place as well. So it's great to see the, the international environment. I think it's also a reflection of the types of projects and entrepreneurs and mentors that go through, through our program. So um, I do want to clarify going into this next stage, which we're going to be entering now the official pitches. Um, so first of all, each of our entrepreneurs will have uh, two minutes to pitch. After that time, we will uh, have five minutes for the jury to make questions for that entrepreneur's pitch. Um, and then after the, the finalization of the, those five minutes, we will be moving on to the next pitch. Okay, so you guys know the order. Again, I'll repeat it just so you know. So first off, we'll have Gloria Gil. Then uh, we will have um, Gonzalo. And then we will uh, have a quick uh, little um, intercession to talk a little bit about our partner, Volition, who so kindly has donated uh, a nice little perk for our, our winners. Um, afterwards, we will have Maria Andreina going. And then Hector uh, will be joining after that. And finally, we will um, finish the session with Naomi. Um, again, it, towards the end, we'll have some time for the jury to deliberate on who the winner will be. And, um, and we'll have a, a poll open for, for the, those of us, those of you that are joining us uh, as attendees for the session. Okay, so Gloria, would you like to go ahead? Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, okay, it says that someone is already sharing, then you have to remove your, yes. your screen. Okay, fantastic. There you go. Okay, then here we are. Okay, share my screen, which is this one. Okay, here we go. Are you all seeing this screen? Perfect, great, great. Then my name is Gloria Hill. And um, this is my presentation. Oh my goodness, I'm not going to ask, sorry. Okay, here we are. Okay. Good. Why do some companies do well and even thrive in difficult times while others struggle or perish? For more than 10 years, we've been gathering data around this question, and we have found that resilient companies are sustained by workers that show resilient factors in three key areas. We have developed an innovative framework to evaluate, improve, and promote organizational resilience. We have also developed a corporate resilience questionnaire and a resilience social game. We have already delivered also a pilot paid program for a government organization with excellent results, so they had hope for extra training. We have also achieved great customer satisfaction in our consultancy and training sessions. We also plan to create a network of certified partners who will be trained to deliver our products and services. We conform a highly experienced team with external support in areas like financing and programming. As we grow, we expect to gain access to funding to support to, um, to hire more employees and expand, expand through Spain and, and abroad. Uh, as we are aware that um, we need to build up our own resilience as a business, we would like to request your support to connect us with some consultants and companies that are working in the resilience field to join forces to move towards a vision of a world in which organizations achieve and promote resilience for sustainable growth. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Gloria. That's great. Um, okay. That was actually under the two minutes, so perfect. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Fantastic. If you don't mind, Gloria, uh, do the stop sharing now so we can okay. uh, yes, see yes, everyone yes. else. Okay, okay. Here we are. Yeah, good. Thanks so much. Um, okay, so now we will open it up to questions from our jury.
might I have, a, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, just can you, uh, how far along are you in terms of reaching out to the market and uh, building revenue? Yes, yes. Well, um, in fact, I've been a solopreneur for quite a, um, a long time. Um, just addressing this organizational resilience framework like two years more or less by, my, by myself. And now we want to create resilient consulting uh, to become a business. Uh, I have a question for Gloria. Uh, congratulations for your presentations. Um, I don't know if I hear it properly, but I, um, uh, you did that, you made your, your MVP with a public uh, organization. Yes. But is yes. your final target the, the public or the, which we, we could be your, your or? Yes, we, we really can work with any kind of organization, being private or being public. In fact, this is an organization that we had already um, doing some training with them. Then they already know me. And when I presented this pilot project, they booked it and they paid for it, of course. And, and it achieved really good results. Then mm -hmm. we are, have a very good client relationship with them. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, question from Emmanuel. Um, can, can you elaborate a bit on your action? What do you actually do? How do you promote resilience? And how do you measure it as well? So oh, yes, 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 yes. What has been your, your impact before and after? Okay, yes. We have developed a corporate resilience questionnaire. Uh, and then we, um, we do the questionnaire at the beginning of our training period. And then uh, we go through it. Sometimes we have one-to-one -one sessions with some employees uh, and also group sessions. And, and then at, at the end of the period of this program, we will evaluate again with this questionnaire and um, it will show the distances. And we're having, we, we've been having really good results, really. Is that response to your question or do you need any more? Uh, partly, but what are, how do you do, how do you manage to improve resilience? What are the actions? I understand the measurement part mm -hmm. of the questionnaire. Yes, yes. You, What kind of okay. The questionnaire or? is based on resilience factors. Then it, it will show which resilient uh, factors are more needed in certain circumstances. Let us say, for example, they need to improve internal communication or they need to improve, um, I don't know, so many things like, for example, empathy or they need to improve so many other resilience factors that, like 30 factors that we measure in that questionnaire. Then as the result shows, then we'll uh, tailor the program, the resilience program for that specific company or business and then we'll deliver it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. So what is, how much do you charge the company? How do you define how much do you charge them? Yes, we have a set prices for consultancy sessions and for training sessions as well. Well, sometimes we do some, uh, like, um, get special prices, for example, for NGOs, because sometimes they cannot get for the full price, then we'll make a special uh, offer for them. And, and, um, but in general, we have we, our set prices for different products that, that we have. And do you, do you mind sharing the prices? Like how much yes, do you charge for example, for this, how long? Yes, yeah, this yeah. Uh, full program, uh, it's been like 6,000 euros, okay? And, and that's the whole program that implies um, quite a few sessions with all of the employees and group of sessions as well. And it lasted for a six, six months period, from the beginning till the end. But of course, it was from time to time. We were not there all the time. We just went and see the and do the sessions when when it was the time. And then we have the consultancy hour, which is around 90 euros. The consultancy hour, uh, hour. and sometimes, as I say, with NGOs, which are around six 
field currently uses instead of, of that. And the training sessions, of course, the training sessions, the varies because uh, of the amount of time that, that it lasts. And also, if it, there is certain regularity, then we, uh, we manage a bit the prices for, for these clients that, that they will get with certain regularity. Thank you so much, Gloria. I think that's the time we have for you. We appreciate. Uh, thank you so much to our, our juries as well. So uh, we will move on to our next entrepreneur, uh, Gonzalo. Okay. Gonzalo, are you available? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Well, so uh, I have to share my my computer also. One second. We have we have your presentation, Gonzalo. Unless you want you want to show it. Okay, so so I can. Let us know what you prefer. Yeah, but I can pass the slides from my computer. No, you, you would share. let us know uh, when the next slide, or if you want to pass it yourself, that you can share your screen. Yes, I, I would like to share my, my screen, please. So go ahead and you should have the share button available now. Okay. Okay, you see the... Yes, you can see it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, now. So let me introduce you to Empong, uh, the collaborative platform of projects uh, between companies, NGOs, and customers for a greater uh, social and economic impact. Uh, I am Gonzalo Medina, founder of Empong, and uh, after my studies and with my working and volunteer experience, that is uh, a lack of trust, uh, knowledge, Gonzalo, uh, just really quick to pause you, we're losing the audio. Can you make sure that you're speaking to the microphone? Yes, um, maybe closer now. There you go. Okay, should I start over or? Sure, go ahead and start over. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry so much. No. Uh, so again, uh, hello everyone. Uh, let me introduce you to Mpong, uh, the collaborative platform uh, of projects between companies, NGOs, uh, and customers for a greater social and economic impact. I am Gonzalo Medina, a founder of Empong, and after my studies and with my working and volunteer experience, I found a critical problem, that is the lack of trust, knowledge, and collaborative culture between private companies, NGOs, and customers. Uh, the solution uh, goes through a new collaboration model and methodology to generate a greater uh, social and economic impact. And this is where Empong uh, comes. comes. Uh, our solution is a platform of projects that function through a strategy of project management, communication, and digital marketing and social media. We generate synergies and benefits in all the partners involved uh, that you can see here uh, only to name a few. Uh, the first sector that we want to focus on is the uh, restoration sector know it from the inside, I've worked on it, and I, there, it presents a lot of advantages that I show you here, such as a high number of locals, a direct connection with the client, scalability, and so on. Uh, the key to our success is that we offer a complete service uh, without disturbing the day-to-day -day, uh, activity of both our partners. Uh, we have a service, uh, market studies, cold calls, and we are working already with a first collaborative project in one a restaurant with two locals and one uh, NGO. We offer a complete uh, service uh, with management, calendar, uh, activity, volunteers, uh, media activity, etc. We have done our job uh, with uh, a great survey for almost uh, 500 people, interviews, uh, incubation program, and uh, we have the vision, we have the, the data, the passion, but we are lacking uh, something. We would like to have a more... Uh, That's object. Sorry, yeah. Well, just the final... Uh, <laughs> just the final slide. Okay, sorry. 
Perfect. No, that's great. You got to, to the end of it. Do mm -hmm. you mind uh, canceling the share so that we can see your video? Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> let's see. You will have the stop share button. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Gonzalo. So now, oh, thank you. Opening to our uh, jury. Who would like to go first? I'll go first. Uh, Gonzalo, thank you. Uh, what, um, how many of these collaborative projects do you see uh, working on or, or facilitating, say, at the end of year one? Yes, uh, for next year, uh, I have like uh, this uh, milestone, yeah. I would like to be like, uh, a, like a trusted partner for uh, companies and, and NGOs. And I have a number in my mind that it would be around 20 collaborations uh, for the next year. Uh, I'm having a, a job on my own now that takes a lot of my time. If this would uh, evolve, uh, I would dedicate my, myself to, to this project. And I, as I wanted to show on the, on the last uh, slide, uh, hire someone to, to help me, especially in the digital marketing, uh, social media uh, stuff that is not my my field, uh, let's say, of, of expertise. A follow-up question. Uh, and if you had 20 going, what, what is your estimated revenue from that, those 20? It depends on the amount of, collaborate, of collaboration. For example, uh, my plan is to work with uh, four or five local um, uh, collaborat collaborations that maybe the... Uh, from each one, I would get maybe uh, 500 uh, euros. But then, if I go, if I take the leap to, for example, work with a franchise, a franchise that has 20 locals, that the amount of work is greater, and the amount of money that I get from that is also greater. So, an estimated would be maybe like uh, for the fifth year, fifth first year, uh, 50,000 or something like that. Okay, I have a question, Gonzalo. Uh, yeah. I would like to ask you about the technology that involves all the, the project, mm -hmm. because it's a platform, it's, it's like a website or something. Did you already yes. have that uh, developed, no? I, I, I yeah, well, uh, uh, like I said, I have the web page, I have a LinkedIn and uh, an Instagram uh, page, uh, and I'm managing all of this uh, myself. But I would like to really give it a, like a boost, a, a more professional uh, view. Uh, that's why I'm considering to hire a, a person that I already have in my mind uh, with a more technological uh, point of view. Because I, I have expertise with the NGOs, with the restoration sector, and I move comfortable around all of this. But the technological part uh, is a little bit missing. So that's where I want to invest more money now. And, and as a side project for you, do you think that these two sectors that you're, you're uh, talking about, the restoration, that it's maybe familiar for you and the NGOs, but could be more than these two? Or yes, yes. Do you, yes, you yes, think? yes. I, I have in mind, for example, things with sports, events, uh, maybe mm -hmm. commerce like textile or, or different kinds of shops or, yeah, I can okay. see that. In my opinion, it's quite uh, scalable and you can take it to other kinds of businesses. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I have a question. So yes. I'm a bit confused by like, so you mentioned like a lot of different targets and a lot of different service that you offer, but mm -hmm. at the early stage, which is your focus target and what are the focus services that you can provide at the well, early stage? Uh, no, yeah, at this early stage, I, foc I focus more on a local uh, point of view. So, I, for example, I took a small business and a small NGO, but that they are in the same uh, neighbor, uh, and, and I think they can benefit uh, a lot from one another because one, uh, up uh, one uh, uh, apports um, the, the financing, the, the visibility, but the other has a really strong uh, social image, uh, a lot of uh, publicity, uh, they can appear on media. I have contact with a lot of influencing people in the uh, social media to give support and, and visibility to all of these projects. So I think there are two sectors that can work very well together and they are not doing it yet. And I offer that service. 
How did you come up with those ideas? What's the genesis? Well, I I wanted to well I showed it on the early uh, slides. I'm a volunteer in three NGOs and I have worked in the restoration sector as waiter. And I, I no longer work in that in that sector because I'm an engineer. But I always thought that if I had a restaurant or if I had, if I had the I don't know uh, some local, I would make this kind of uh, social uh, projects because I believe that one sector and the other can beneficiate themselves and uh, write synergies between uh, one another. So that's when it came to my mind. Okay, thank you so much, Gonzalo. That's all the time thank we you. have for questions from the jury. Thank you, Drew. Much. Okay, so let's um, go ahead now and we wanted to take just a quick little break to um, introduce you guys to our partner. So our partner is, uh, go through, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> our partner is Volition. So we're very happy to have Volition uh, who wanted to collaborate with us in making sure that entrepreneurs continue to have the best support they, they can to take their businesses to the next level. So Volition is uh, offering an investment readiness consulting session for our uh, top three winners. So this is uh, gonna be amazing for the entrepreneurs in the sense that they will have an idea of where they can take uh, their business uh, in the next stage in terms of um, uh, being prepared for that investment round right so having a, a clear uh, set of um, a clear idea of where their business can can be taken to and um, the our partner volition as I said they are actually an award-winning startup uh, they are based in Canada uh, but they also uh, work in in Madrid as well so we've done we've all actually already hosted a pitch night with them here in Madrid um, and they focus in preparing in, uh, entrepreneurs for uh, in investor readiness for pitching for presentations they help entrepreneurs in the next stage of financials and projections making sure that they are marketing and selling to the right people and uh, a lot of other things that they can help our entrepreneurs in in the next stages to come so we're very happy uh, that Volition is uh, joining us and if you guys want to connect with uh, Volition on social media. This is their uh, information. And you can also uh, book a session with them to, to learn more about how it is that Volition can help you uh, take your, your business to the next level. Okay, and I'm actually so, here, so I just wanted to say hello. Oh, <laughs> but you did a perfect job of pitching my company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you weren't sure if you were going to be joining us, Melanie. Yeah, um, no, it took me a little bit of uh, finagling to get in, but I want to say hi to everyone. I've met some of the, the entrepreneurs here already through the pitch masterclass and I've also done one-on-one -on -one sessions with two of the of the entrepreneurs here so it's been great seeing the pitches so far and yeah you can book me for a discovery call which is like a 20 minute um, get to know who I am and and what we do kind of session and that's a free call for that one um, but no that was a perfect job of pitching volition so <laughs> I couldn't have done it better myself <laughs> <laughs> uh, so best of luck to the rest of the pictures it's been really great watching thanks so much melanie okay so um we're moving on to the next uh pitch this is gonna be maria andreina maria andreina do you want to share your own screen or would you like us to go through yes i'd like that please thank you so your own screen. yeah it, it would be easier for perfect me. perfect okay okay here we go all right, all right. Hi, my name is Andreina Gomez Torres and I am the CEO and co-founder of Wakui. Wakui is a tool to modernize salons and spas and re-enchant customers, marketing and technology for growth. Our ultimate goal is to actually become sort of like a virtual assistant for people to manage their self-care and for beauty and wellness businesses to rely on their day-to-day. -day. Customers today, they demand more personalized and digital experiences that salons and spas really can provide. If they can provide it, people move on. And that is why the 6% that are large franchises in the market are taking more and more of the market share, while small businesses are really struggling and they're even shutting down their doors. And we see it all the time. We want to do something about this. And uh, we've made Wakui, which helps uh, businesses transition to digital, starting with uh, booking and business management software so that their new customers can discover, compare, and book beauty and wellness experiences with them. As a, a teammate of mostly women and also 
from Venezuela, which is a beauty obsessed country, we feel like we really understand this industry and are able to really connect better with our partners who are also mostly women. And um, we, want, we want what we to be a movement to reinvent the industry, to help them focus on being different, on targeting niche markets and really delighting like-minded customers. Um, and that's how we are different from our competitors because we really uh, give our businesses tools and educational resources so they can feel confident and embrace change. Uh, we charge a subscription for our software, but the profile is completely free, unlike our competitors who charge a fee for each sale that their businesses make. Um, and in this market, Spain, where we are, 90% of 70,000 salons are still up for grabs, and our strategy is to start in Valencia, move south, north, and eventually go to Latin America. We already have an MVP and are starting to enroll, enroll partners, and with the prize money, we'd like to uh, use it to create an event early next year to officially launch the movement in Valencia. And if you want to join our mission of leveling the playing field and completely transforming the beauty and wellness industry, support Wakui. Great, perfect timing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria Leina. Uh, if you don't mind just canceling the share and great. And we'll open it up now to questions from the jury. Well, I have a question, Maria Andreina. Congratulations for your presentations. And I would like to ask you about the, the fees that you are charging. Are you charging to the business or to the client both? How's the charging yeah. strategy? Yeah, we have, we, we've built a marketplace. And at the beginning, we're, fo we're focusing on bringing the partners, the businesses into the platform. And we already have like the sticky part of the platform made. And uh, for the users, we'll bring their, their current customers into the platform. And then eventually we can really um, focus on bringing new users to the platform so they can book with, with the businesses. But yeah, it's a, it's a marketplace. Yes, but you are sharing when you, uh, your revenues are coming from the business, the clients that use the business or both? Yeah, no, no, no. The users don't pay anything. We, we charge okay. the, whoever gets the most value and that's the businesses. So we charge them the, for the subscription, yeah. Okay, and just a quick question. Do you have your, the, the technology developed uh, already, more or yeah. less? Yeah, we have, a, we have an MVP. Uh, we, I mean, it's, it's a platform with, you can discover new businesses. You have the business profiles, the map to locate them. And then from the business side, you have a little dashboard with a few initial metrics. Um, you can have the calendar so you can add and, all your bookings and stuff. Like we have something already um, with, with, with the basic features that the businesses would need uh, already developed. And it's website or a uh, mobile or just web or? Yeah, it's web. About that? At the moment, web. it's web. It's sort of responsive, but not the best because it has a lot of little. So we're working yeah. right now on like uh, a mobile view. I don't know if that's the proper name in English. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not an app yet, but just like a mobile adapted uh, version. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, one quick question, um, can, Maria, can you give a kind of example of a particular, and you know, name a company uh, and, you know, that, that's uh, on the platform and what they're getting from it? So yeah. make it tangible for me. Yeah. So, for example, I can name you, let's say, um, Barberia Antigua Reina, you know, a barbershop. Um, they have, they're not even on Google Maps, right? So what they get from us is, Right now, we onboard them onto the, onto the platform um, until we figure out how to properly teach them how to take advantage of the platform. So we gather their information, we create them the profile with the pictures, the description, everything. And we really try to focus on what makes them different. So we, we um, highlight, uh, for example, in this case, is this barbershop speaks English in, a, in an area of a lot of um, digital nomads in Valencia. So that's like a good thing, like a good hook for them, for him to, to attract his clients. And so we've made the profile for that. And then for, on, on, if, he's a, if he has a access to the booking and business platform, um, he has the, the calendar where he can have all the bookings. The clients could uh, potentially book his services like, oh, I want a haircut tomorrow at noon, you know, just like, uh, and he'll get the notification. Um, and then he will see the metrics. Oh, you, you sold one haircut this week or something like that. Uh, he'll have the database of his clients um, and eventually, you know, that database will be able to be, um, have like, uh, right now it has automated uh, reminders and notifications for the bookings, but eventually it can have like uh, other types of 
of email so to bring the client back to the to the barber shop and stuff like that um i have a question you spoke about subscription subscription but uh, i don't know if you mentioned how much actually is it yeah no i didn't mention it yeah it's uh we're thinking of starting up, up on 30 euros per month um we think that's like a moderate uh, price and you know to cover the mvp features and we'll eventually want to create new plans that add more value uh, and maybe upsell the ones, the clients we already have. But yeah, that's, that's uh, the price we have. Um, it's any other I have another question. So, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, another question is like, so what is the profile of this beauty salon? Like, are they, uh, like what is what the age, the demographic of them, and to see like how they will be able to to take the technology because in Cambodia some people are trying to do it, but like it's quite hard to convince these people to use the technology and to uh, answer to convince them. Yeah, no, I hear you completely. Yeah, I, the hardest thing is is the customer acquisition cost for these businesses. That, um, so it varies, you know, we have some of, of younger people that are like 30, 35, and they're like more, they at least have an Instagram profile and they, you know, they are, they at least have a web presence, right? And then we have other people who are like 40, 45 years old, or maybe a, a bit older, like this barbershop. Um, and they have absolutely no clue. And they say, I mean, social media doesn't work. Word, word of mouth is the only thing that works. So that's why we feel like it's important to like create the, these resources so, so that we can slowly communicate how important it is. And I mean, they're feeling it, right? And like in the past two years, at least 4,000 of hair salons have closed out of 50,000 that were in Spain. And, and that's really a huge deal. So I mean, I feel they, they're feeling their lack of, of transition to the digital world. And, and we, we just have to communicate and like give them, you know, like the help to, to move forward. Okay, thank you so much, Maria Andreina. That's all the time we have for questions. All right, um, great. So we will be moving on uh, to our next uh, entrepreneur. So we have Hector. Um, Hector, are you available? You are ready? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So do you want to share your screen or do you want us to do the presentation? Yeah, yes, we, we will share our okay. presentation. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and share your screen. Uh, let me know if you can see the. We can see it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All no. right. Ready when you are. Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Javier. This is my partner Hector, and we are Bumble. Now, every year due to a lack of marketing information, eight out of ten business in Mexico fail. Bumble connect local business business with potential customers and analyzes their experience through a mobile app that offers real time geolocated information all year long. So our aim is reaching thirty seven local business and that nine hundred and eighty two people in the first year use our mobile application. We are expecting to reach five cities within the following three years. During the first year of operation, we are going to obtain a net profit margin of 47% with revenues of 444,000 Mexican pesos. Our main competitors use all data and have high cost services. This let us be of competitive advantage with low prices and real time data. Our team is made by specialists that will help a business get new customers and increase their sales. During the bridge contest, we posted a video on Facebook that got more than 60,000 views and more than 400 clicks to the voting link. This just to, to know the impact that we had in four days. With the prize money, we'll be able to finance the first year of Bungle operation. We all are Bungle. And this is Bungle. Great, thank you so much. You guys came in 30 seconds under under the two minutes, so fantastic. And now we will go ahead and open it up to questions. Do you guys mind uh, stop sharing the screen so that we can yes. uh, see your video and that way? Stop sharing. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. Okay, so um, questions from the jury. Um, I can start. Uh, so what do you do to help these new businesses to succeed? And do you have a specific sectors of new businesses in which you think you have more value than others? You have a, a sweet spot, basically. Yes, basically what we do is to connect uh, customers with the business through a mobile app. What we are bringing to the business is that the customer evaluate the experience of the business through the mobile app and we take that information and transform into insights. tips and insights for the business to improve their services. Meanwhile, the users get discounts and and prices to increase their participation on the application. We are getting new customers to the business. Meanwhile, we provide business also tips to improve the, the services. And we are starting with restaurants and bars. And we are looking forward once the business is once bungled is established and have a mature operation, we are planning to expand to other sector, sectors like government, uh, education, way. banking. But the first step is start with restaurants and pubs. Question, what is the incentive for the customer to be using your platform? the discounts that, that they can get and the prices that they could achieve with the more they evaluate our business. Okay, I have a question. First of all, congratulations for your presentations. And I would like to ask you, uh, which could be the, the big problem that you face with the, with the project, which is the, or the technology or the business development? Which could be the, the the biggest problem that you feel that you could have? A start, just a start. We, we actually, we are um, working for a start the next year. And I think this is just the, the problem that I see. Just give the first step. And you, do you have your, the technology developed? You have the app developed already or not? We are developing today. We have uh, a team with, do, with two uh, developers and they are uh, working in the application. We, we will have this application uh, at January of the next year. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, what is your revenue model? How do you uh, make money? Ah, uh, uh, it's through a monthly subscription. Basically, the business that need our service have to pay for an, oh, no, no. an annual subscription. We have three packages. The basic, that is the one that we take to, to forecast our financial information. The medium one, that is more expensive, but it's like the basic if, is for new businesses and small businesses. The medium is for enterprises established, actually, and we have a personalized package. And well, this this last one is more uh, negotiating with the entity that needs a specific kind of service. Great. Any other questions from the jury? Yes, I have a, a last question then. Uh, then you can make a tailor-made uh, proposition to uh, if a company wants to have uh, certain metrics about something specific, you can develop something tailor-made for them. It's a possibility in your roadmap or? Yes, we can, with the personalized package, we could adapt our statistics and metrics and service to the specific needs of that business. Yeah. That's why we are associated with two engineers that are the ones that currently are developing the, the mobile application.
Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect, just in time. So thank you so much, uh, Hector and uh, the Bungle team. So we will be moving on to the next um, presentation and our final one, which will be Naomi. Naomi, are you available? There you are. Um, do you want to share uh, your screen? Is there anything in particular you want to share? Otherwise, we can just put a background. Yes, no, I don't have any, I, I, I don't have a pitch, in, a pitch deck. Okay. Then we'll just have you uh, present as is, and uh, this is fine. So, um, let me see, ready whenever you are. I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay, great. So, um, I'm Naomi, the founder of uh, It Is Now. It's a foundation for the inclusion of kids uh, with special needs. Uh, we discovered the world of uh, handicap uh, with my son. Uh, who is turning seven just today. It's just an amazing coincidence because I would have never thought that I would be doing that after working so long in finance, but here I am. So the foundation is, uh, it is now. Uh, we create uh, artistic sensory rooms um, in the US, uh, in uh, every single school uh, for kids with special needs, there is a sensory room. Uh, basically it's a space where there is light, music and sensory experiences. So our idea is to uh, create artistic sensory rooms outside of the schools to make it inclusive and accessible to everybody. Uh, so we have created a group of artists who are willing to create those uh, playgrounds, those digital playgrounds. Um, and the idea is to use new technologies, immersive art, digital art, to, moder to modernize uh, them. So, um, Behind it, uh, the business model is very simple. The space would be free during the day for schools, for communities, for families, and corporates that uh, sponsor the project uh, would um, use it in the evening for uh, private events. So we don't, we don't want to rely on fundraising entirely. That's why we want to generate revenues. Uh, and also, uh, we want to offer those uh, sensory rooms to hospitals just to improve the well-being of patients, of kids, uh, when they visit, uh, when they have visits in the hospital with their siblings and their families. And that would be um, supported by fundraising and sponsors. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to pitch my, um, my project today. Uh, it's a really special day for me today. And uh, I just want to let, I would like you to know that I am extremely determined. It's not a project that I'm going to do for two or three years. It's something that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Okay, so opening it up to uh, the questions from the jury. Yes, uh, thank you for that, Naomi. The, uh, is, do you have research data um, that has been done by third parties, research institutions about the value of such sensory experiences? So yes. you know, what, 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 what's uh, another way of putting this, what's the problem you're solving here? Yes, so sensory rooms exist, have been developed uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands in the 70s. And uh, the idea is to stimulate uh, persons with special needs, but also the space is very soothing. So it's stimulating, but the person is also at peace. So there is light, music, and that, um, so the, the concept was developed uh, like 40 years ago and has been used in, in like every single school in the in the US at least and and and, um, and that's why it's it's a, it's a proof of concept has been already established but my idea is to take that to another step to make it artistic to make it digital because it feels like today schools just use a couple of spotlights and music it's very basic but with digital art you can take it um, uh, to like uh, becoming um, a very artistic uh, artistic thing and inclusion is also key because those those sensory rooms that just exist in schools as of today so the idea is to make to, to be to live in a better uh, a more inclusive world and to have it like outside of schools to have accessible to all because digital art uh, I think it's a meeting point for everybody for parents for young people and for it's a revolution for kids with special needs Thank you so much. I think for me, it's my first time I discovered it. I never heard before and I just Google it and it looks fascinating. Um, so 
Uh, did, do you have any first uh, like prototype, like a room that you're experimenting in? Do you have like, what have you been doing so far? Do you have also corporates who show an interest in using it? So um, what we have been doing over the last couple of months is focusing on hospitals. So we have been talking to um, the largest French hospital in Paris, for instance, and they are super interested in having a, a, a sensory room inside the hospital. So our idea to um, start step by step is to um, ask artists to um, have their digital, digital installation in the space to begin with, like for three or six months, and then um to uh, to do to do the, the full space so my idea to to work on it step by step and the first step would be just to have the digital installation that could be just on the wall it won't have to be the whole space at once but it's more like to build a relationship with them and uh, to go step by step and in terms of uh, your second question in terms of corporate sponsors so what we have been doing is we had a, um, a fundraising party in new york um, uh, a year ago, so we raised money there, but we have not started. Um, we have not started um, uh, pitching to corporates yet. My idea is to wait for the very uh, first hospital in France to say yes, uh, because we can finance the first project, or we can try to find a sponsor. But ideally, we prefer to find a sponsor. But my idea is like it would be my proof of concept. It would be. It, that project in the hospital would be the first, yeah, my, my first proof of concept. Can you describe what, uh, the, the name of the company is It Is Now? Did I get that? Yes, it's a foundation. Can, can, how, how did you, uh, okay, sorry, foundation. How did you reach that name? <laughs> Actually, um, I was my, with my husband and two, um, two um, special educators in New York and we met them uh, with, um, uh, at Roosevelt School, which is um, a school for special needs in New York. And we, we, we were thinking about doing things for like a couple of years. And, 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 and once we, we met with them and we thought just, it is now, we have to do it. It's more like it's not just in, in our mind. It, just, it was just to give us the energy to do it. And I think it helps me every day. And uh, may I have a question. Congratulations for the for your pitch and the presentations and for the day that you did it. And so I have a question. Maybe it's not a question because I understand that you have a worldwide vision. No, it, don't, don't you think that you have? Uh, it's not a country-based uh, idea. No. No, it's not. I mean, um, so I lived in New York for um, almost um, 15 years. Um, I am French. I am now based in mm. Barcelona. So the idea is my three cities are clearly Barcelona, New York, and Paris. So I have just started um, in Paris. I have also, um, I was in New York last week, so I met a, a foundation, um, an art foundation in New York too, to see what we could do with them, because also uh, we, can, uh, we can do it in partnership with like a museum, and this is what they have in Brooklyn, so that, that's another idea. Um, mm. But uh, of course, yeah, yeah, I, I am, yeah, those three cities are for me um, my priority. Okay, and the last question is, uh, is about the artists that do you want to... Uh... I'm going to cut you off. That's actually the time we have for jury questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you, everyone. Thanks, uh, Noemi, for your presentation. And so, uh, we are actually going to be moving on now to the final calculation of the, of the votes from our jury. So um, our jury, uh, you should have received a survey that you need to fill out with the, the uh, points that you allot to each of, the, of our entrepreneurs. Do know that uh, the final uh, uh, winners will actually be chosen not only based on the, the presentation that they've given here today and the, the um, tally or the votes that the jury gives them, but they will also be um, tallied based on the, the public vote that we had on their participation throughout the program. There's a lot of things that are taken into consideration. Um, for those of you that are watching and that are joining us, you do have the poll open to you now so you can tell us which uh, project you, you are interested in, in supporting. Uh, you thought that was the most, most interesting one to you. And um, 
Now we also uh, want to make sure while the jury is deliberating and while they're sending in their votes, um, between you guys, you know, the, those of you that are presenting your pitches today, uh, what was your experience like going through uh, the LEAP, the incubation program? I think, you know, each of you have gone through it at different stages. And um, I think it's interesting to hear from you guys your experience. I don't know, for example, uh, Gonzalo, would you like to share a little bit about your experience and going through the LEAP? program yeah well uh, if you hear me <laughs> uh, basically I think it, it helped me go from an idea to a, to a project and to uh, convince myself that this is something that I really wanted to do that, like at what at one point it was just an idea but now uh, through the whole process and know all the parts of the business and the organization uh, I know that this is something that I want to do. So I want to really thank uh, Bridge for Billions and the whole incubation process because this has been something really, really great, a uh, great experience for me. Great. What, what would you say was the most challenging part? Oof, the finances. <laughs> 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 but no, no, the, the whole process and with with all the team there in Bridge for Billions, really thank you guys and, and the mentors. I had a really nice uh, mentor, I'm sure everyone has. Uh, no, but everything was challenging, but everything was really, really a great experience. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. Um, what about you, Gloria? Gloria, what was your experience like? I know uh, we know your mentor, Nati, who, who had been on this journey with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience. Gloria, I never see. Yeah, she's here. Oh, we can't hear you. Okay, there, there, there. We can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Um, it's been a fantastic experience. I came to Bridge for Billions with my passion, which is resilience. I did my PhD on resilience. I have had already worked with resilience and applying to business, but I was not. I was not developing a business myself. Okay then I wanted to make it grow because I believe in this idea and I believe of bringing uh, resilience to, to organizations as a way to uh, create a better world. And then out of this ideal, then Bridge for Billions has given me a, a way, a path, like uh, steps that I have to complete to see this uh, idea um, materialize. And then for me, it has been great. I've been learning a lot completely from my mentor, from the program, from the rest of the, the mates that we have during this journey. Um, I'm really all over with this because I, I would recommend it, no doubt, because I think it's fantastic. You, you're doing a great job with this. Thank you very much, really. Thank you, Gloria. That's very kind of you. I mean, the reason why we're doing this is obviously to help support entrepreneurs like you guys, you know, and your ideas and the vision that you have for that. So thanks so much for sharing that. Um, and and Bongle team, how about you guys? What was your experience going through the program like? No, could you share? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, in, in my case, I think uh, I had this, this dream since two years along, and I think uh, the, this this year was the moment for start this this startup. I started uh, just alone. Then, uh, with a talk of thirty minutes, I have a, a new partner. Then, when I start to talk with the two engineers, I just ask for the price uh, of the development, and just then I, I talk about the idea. They told me, I, we want to be your partner. We don't want to, to, sell, to sell you something. We want to be your partner. I think Bridge helped me to take this idea to the reality. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to see that from just being able to define what it is that you were trying to do, you ended up building your team, right? I think uh, once you have a very clear vision of where you're going, it's so much easier to communicate it and, and get people to, to come on board. 
So that's that's fantastic to hear. Fantastic to hear. Thank you for sharing. You. And uh, Naomi, what about for you? How was your experience going through Bridge for Billions? You know, for you, I think it's a little bit different because you are building a foundation. So how how did you find the tools? Uh, you know, helped you your mentor, uh, helping guide uh, each and every step as as you continue to build it is now. Could you? Yeah, share no, it helped. It helped me a lot. I'm I'm very grateful. It was the best idea of of this year for me that to, to do this, this program. Uh, I love the platform, the questionnaire, um, the weekly meetings and all of the energy that, that you give us. So it was like a, a very, very uh, important um, step for me. And uh, it helped me to think and rethink to what I was talking about and the way I was presenting. So thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Great, great to hear. Um, yeah, I think, you know, part of the, the entrepreneurship journey is challenging your own assumptions, right, about your own businesses and the things that you think you know. So I think one of the things that's interesting to see is we've had entrepreneurs, and I think, Naomi, you can speak to this too, as when you're getting far ahead and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, we have to rethink this and going back and, and thinking about it in a different way, you know? So I think um, the, the platform and the tools themselves are, are designed in order to accommodate for that, you know, to be able to, to iterate, to change, to pivot from whatever it is that you're building. So um, next, uh, Maria Andreina, could you share a little bit with us about your experience going through the leap? Yeah. So for me, it was also the finance model that was the hardest. I left that for, <laughs> for the end, uh, but also impact. But at the same time, the most challenging and the most rewarding because uh, we had already, we had a, a vision of the business when we started at Bridge for Billions. We just, because we came with the idea from Venezuela and trying to like see how the market was here. But um, actually like our, our panorama completely changed after the program, like, um, we wouldn't be able to tell the story that we told today without going through Bridge for Billions we, because we had half of the ideas that came up during the program. And it really gave us a lot, like a, it really painted the picture for us, you know, and, and the vision, like uh, all the little, like you were saying, like the milestones to, to get to where you want to go. And it's super powerful. And I, I will never tire of saying how much uh, Bridge for Billions impacted us. And I, I want to tell everyone back home, you know, start a, a business, go on Bridge for Billions because actually you have other languages, which is amazing too. So, I mean, I, I'm all for you guys, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're all for, for all of you too. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, something that's very great that you mentioned is definitely the fact that we offer Bridge for Billions uh, currently in English and Spanish and, and uh, the platform is now in French as well. So we're trying to reach as many entrepreneurs and provide the support for as many entrepreneurs as we can. Um, and it's just very amazing to see each of you guys, also your stories, where it is that you're coming from. Uh, you know, for example, for you, Maria Andreina, you had your team, you know, relocated and the ability to work digitally was was definitely something that, that benefited you guys. Um, but I think also, for example, in the case of Hector and Bo you know, having access to these types of entrepreneurship resources um, is also interesting, you know, as I, I'm originally from Mexico as well, so I understand what some of the challenges are uh, when trying to start up in, 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 an, in an ecosystem that might not have all the right steps or, you know, or the, or the path clearly defined for how you should do it. So, um, so with that, I want to thank you guys because I think, uh, I mean, from all of us here at the team, um, it's, it's just great to see each and every one of your stories. And uh, we also learn from the experiences that you have. So thank you so much. Um, and so uh, we want to make the announcement for who the winner is. And uh, the winner for this year's The Leap Pitch Challenge, first edition, is uh, Maria Andreina Gomez with Huacui. So, <laughs> congratulations, Maria Andreina. Um, great job. You know, we're super proud of what you've, uh, how far you guys have come and you've great, you know, it's great to see where you guys are going to be taking this. We also want to um, mention who our second and third prize are, who will be having the, um, the consulting session with Volition. And this one actually came in at a perfect tie. So our second and third prize are Gloria Hill with Resilia Consulting. And our third prize goes to Naomi with It Is Now. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. 
Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you so much to our jury as well uh, for being here, for the insights, the questions that you've provided. I think it also helps uh, each of our participants to understand what's, uh, you know, the, the sensation of going through a pitch challenge to get these types of questions, you know, as, as they continue to grow their, their businesses. So we really appreciate your time. We appreciate your participation. Um, and I think with that, guys, we are going to conclude today's Leap Pitch Challenge. And we urge you to uh, join us in the next edition. The next edition will be six months from now. So we'll be preparing a new batch of entrepreneurs to, to prepare to pitch their ideas. And uh, that's it, guys. We want to thank you. And we hope you have a great day. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Congrats to all. Thank you. Woo! Congratulations. Bye. <laughs> a very woman podium. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we will be sharing everything about the voting and all of it with you guys later, okay? Congratulations to you all. Thank you. Um, congratulations on your presence today. You were all amazing. We're very, very proud. And we'll be in touch with you after the event. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.